Eternals released recently, and I saw it. I did not like it very much. That's all I'm going to say in the non-spoiler section, because I don't really understand what happened in this movie, and it's hard to avoid talking about spoilers when you don't understand what happened. So, spoiler territory from here now on, because I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but I did not like this one very much. Okay, spoiler time. So, the, I, I don't... I don't even know where to start about this movie. This is like the third time I tried to record this, and each time I just get like on tangents. I mean, this movie—the pacing is awful. They don't. This movie feel, manages to feel really fast and way too short. Like this movie, this movie manages to feel like it doesn't have enough character moments, and they're doing, you know, tell they're showing they're telling me instead of showing me relationships and character emotions, so I don't feel them. But then you know they're also like what like spending way too much time on certain things. Which okay, I got that out of the way. The characters should not be as good as they should are not as good as they should be, you know, you have this great cast, most of these are very accomplished and fantastic actors, there's no reason that these characters are so one note as they are, uh, I mean, like, you know, all, there's, there's a lot of, like, plot holes in this, which don't, like, why is there a deaf character, I understand that she's a deaf actress, and I love her, she's, in Walking Dead, she's fantastic, but why on earth is there a deaf eternal, like, if they can do whatever they want, I don't understand why they made one that's deaf, like, I have nothing pr- wrong with having a deaf superhero, I just don't know if this was the place to have one. Like, I think, you know, like, just a regular person who happens to be super speed is a way... Which is, like, I would rather watch that movie with just Lauren Rudolph as the lead than, like, her in this movie. Just because it doesn't make sense for her to be an Eternal. Like, I have nothing wrong with the character. It's just, if she's an Eternal, why is she deaf? And then also they have problems with, like, they say that she can understand what people are saying, but then, like, they still talk sign language there. Like, if she understands what you're saying... I understand that she uses sign language... But why are they talking in sign language to her? Like, are they trying to isolate her or something? I don't get that. I don't know if that's just nitpicking, but it, it feels kind of silly. Like, I feel like there is a time, there is a place to have a deaf superhero. I have nothing wrong with having that. It's good to have, you know, representation and stuff. But why is an eternal like that? Which I think is a problem with a lot of the stuff. Like, you know, I don't understand a lot of it. Like, why is one of the Eternals young? Like, I don't understand why one of them is supposed to say a child. I don't think they ever explained that either. But yeah, they, they are, there's a lot of problems with this movie. I, I think I'm just going to... This is probably going to be a short review just because I don't really know what to say about this movie. It's not very good. But I want to talk about what I think this movie should have been. So imagine if Druig, the mind control one, saw... Basically, you could keep most of the beginning, like, you know, with their arriving on Earth the same. And eventually, around that time where he's, you know, he controls that huge war that's going on in, like, China, wherever it was, and he controls everybody, and, you know, they're like, oh, no, what's he doing? So he takes them to the, his own place in the wilderness, and... The Eternals decide they're just going to let him do it because it's either easier than having a conflict. Then, he eventually has enough people that this is, like, crazy, you know, they have to deal with this. So, he eventually convinces some of them to join him because, you know, like, humans, you know, they love the humans. All of them do, even Druid. He's, you know, a very rational person. He wants to protect them. And he realizes that he has to protect them a little bit from themselves. You know, they still have free will, but, they, you know, they're unable to harm each other to a certain extent. So, some of them join him. They're like, yeah, that's a great idea. Let's do it. But them other ones are, you know, like free will, they need free will. They see the beauty of free will and the beauty of humans. They believe in them. And they believe that, you know, like, you're not going to appreciate anything if there's no war. You know, like, war helps you appreciate stuff, I guess. Something like that, I think, could have been a much more interesting movie, a much more interesting conflict. Because, you know, they have the same goals, they have the same reasoning. Druig never becomes a crazy madman or anything. You know, he's always a very rational person or eternal. And you could take away all the stupid emergent stuff because, you know, they're not destroying the world in the Eternals. Like, you know, if this was Avengers 5, then yeah, sure, maybe they're destroying the world. But in Eternals, I'm not at all worried because, you know, like, what's going on with Spider-Man 3 or, you know, any of these other Earthbound... Oh, what? They're not happening? Whoa, that's crazy. Like, what? What? They really want me to believe that they're about to destroy the world in the Eternals? No. That ain't happening. So, yeah, that, that was never something I was concerned about. So, the whole conflict felt useless. So, I think I'm just going to leave my review there, and I think I'm just going to get into some topics I'd like to discuss about the movie. So, one, the end credit scene. So, I have no idea what to think of Thanos' brother. I guess he's here now, so that's interesting. Then, the blade showing up was obviously really cool, because what I'm hoping this means is that they're going to be creating other superhero teams, because eventually not everybody can be an Avenger. I don't need an Avengers movie with 25 people in it. I want, like, seven Avengers around. So, you know, you can actually give everybody an arc and screen time. So I have multiple superhero teams, you know, they can meet, you know, once every 10 years to have the big team-up event, that's great, but let there be multiple superhero teams, you know, you have, in the comics there's so many different superhero team-ups, you know, it could just be things like the Defenders, you know, like, they're, most of the characters are interchangeable, 
just, you know, the idea is that they're not all working together, you know, but I feel like, you know, you, you, you start off with Kit Harrington and Blade, you know, you can add in Moon Knight, uh, uh, I, I don't know, you know, that, that's for them to decide, but, like, you know, you can have the darker ones, you know, you can add Punisher, Daredevil if you want, you know, like, that's an interesting team up that I'd love to see, rather than them all being crammed onto one Avengers lineup, you know, that, that's ridiculous, so, I'm excited to see that, I, I'm excited that this movie is not the quintessential Marvel movie, it's not Ant-Man and the Wasp-like, we're, it's, I think you have to just give directors the ability to make their own movies, you're going to get your, you're going to get, like, you know, the terrible ones, you know, like, Aquaman, I'm not a fan of, you know, you're gonna get Aquaman, but I'd rather watch, I'd rather get 10 Aquamans, where you give directors the, opinion, the ability to do what they want to do with the characters, because amid, amid those 10, you're gonna get your The Suicide Squad, you're, you know, you're gonna get uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, you know, you're gonna get that stuff, but, you know, you're gonna have to go, also go through, you know, maybe the less interesting ones, the one that you're not gonna, I don't want to call too many of them, because I feel bad, you know, when a director, you know, is actually given the ability to do something and they mess up, you know, I don't want to call too many of them. I just, I think Aquaman's a good example because there are people who actually like that movie, so I don't feel as bad just being the one guy who doesn't like it, you know, I don't feel guilty. Not that my opinion's going to change too much about that stuff, but I'd rather, you know, bag on a movie that people actually do like just because I'm not going to change the public opinion on that. So, you know, people have said enough about the bad superhero movies, I don't need to pile on to that, I guess. But, uh, so yeah, I'm happy to see that Marvel is clearly, this does not feel like your average Marvel movie. They let, uh, Chloe Zhao, I believe, directed this. I like that they let her do her thing, rather than, like, you know, another stale, old, oh yeah, I've seen this before, Marvel movie. So, I was very happy to see that, because, you know, I was worried that this would just feel like your own old Marvel movie, because, you know, especially with some of the stuff they have on the slate, this cannot feel like your average Marvel movie. That would not work. Like, that would not be an interesting movie. Like, you know, Deadpool 3 needs to be unique, uh, Blade needs to be unique, Fantastic Four needs to be unique. When they get to the X-Men, they gotta feel different, you know, they can't all be Ant-Man and the Wasp. Which is, like, yeah, I, I feel like that should be go without saying, but clearly it doesn't. So, I'm happy to see that, that, that definitely made me happy, but yeah, no, the, the, the writing on this movie was pretty, uh, mixed, I'd say, you know, the, the, the story was all over the place. So, I... I don't know how much else I have to say with this. I mean, DC's definitely doing a better job than Marvel has at the moment with giving directors the ability to make their own movie. Like, you know, the Batman looks unique. It might be terrible. Like, the Batman might be an awful movie. I don't think it will. But I'm, I would just be happy that Marvel let uh, Matt Reeves make his Batman movie, you know. Because then you're going to get things like The Dark Knight and Batman. You know, you're going to get your Christopher Nolan Batman trilogy when you let directors do what they want to do. But I knew you're going to get your Raimi trilogy. Like, those can happen when you let directors do their thing, but if you don't, you're not going to get, you know, you're limiting your potential by so much. I, I don't like the Marvel formula, but at the end of the day, Ant-Man and the Wasp is still an enjoyable movie. Like, you know, I can turn my mind off and enjoy that. This, I'm not sure if I could do that. Like, to be completely honest, I'm not sure I can, but I'd rather get more of these than more of Ant-Man and the Wasp. Because Ant-Man and the Wasp, I'm tired of that already, but I'm going to get even more tired of that. Where this, you know, I might, if they keep mixing it up and let directors do what they want to do, then yeah, I probably will keep coming and I'll still be interested. So... I feel like that's just, that, that's probably all I have to say on this movie. It's not very good, but it is what it is. So I'd probably give it around like a 4 out of 10, I think, just because in its current state, it's just not good, but I'm, I, there are certain things about it that makes me excited. Not necessarily about the future of these characters, because they're mostly pretty uninteresting, but about what it means that Marvel is doing, which I, I hope that's what it signifies. You know, it's possible that most people think this was the average Marvel movie, and I'm just a, I, I was uh, misinterpreting it, I guess. So yeah, there was more opinions I have on this movie, but uh, I don't need to go into those because I think I bagged on this movie enough. So I'm, I'm just going to leave it here. Make sure to comment if maybe you had a different opinion or you have an opinion on some of the things I talked about. So yeah, make sure to comment that and uh, you know what you think this means for the how Marvel is handling their future.